Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Obtain, Evaluate, and Communicate Information, Level 4, Scientific and Technical Information. You can see there's quite a bit of source material, so let me get that out of the way. And so when you're looking at technical and scientific information, where that information comes from and what it's used for it's going to be slightly different, but the whole point of that is to better understand a phenomena. So you always want to start with the information and defining like what is the phenomena that you're trying to better understand. But in this case, that information will come in two different types. We have scientific information. That's information that's based on observations and then experiments. And then we have technical information. That's going to be more like methods, procedures, um, specifications and that's more important in engineering but in both cases what you'll do is you'll obtain the information you'll then evaluate the information and then you'll integrate and communicate that information so after watching this video you should be able to do that with scientific and technical information around for example building a Lego uh, design that increases power while keeping the direction the same or looking at stellar nucleosynthesis. I'm going to show you how to look at that type of information as we design a quilt and then you'll have a chance to do the same as you think about your opening move in chess. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay so as we look at the information that's before us you can see I've got information on quilts and quilts and color and so you can kind of kind of think of where I'm going for this but let me define what the phenomena is. Okay, so the first thing I do is define the phenomena. The next thing I want to do is I want to write down what are the sources that I'm going to be using as I obtain that information. Okay, so the sources that I'm using are, uh, first, of all, first of all, from Quilters World, we have this Cherry Blossom Valentine design. Um, from Quick and Easy Quilts, we have this My Heart's Delight. And then from Applied Color Research, we have an article on what color do you feel. And so a little bit of information is kind of found as we look at those titles. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to gather information. So I'm going to obtain information from each of these sources and I'll note the source as I go. Okay, so I've included the source for the cherry blossom. So there's 12 prints that I would have to buy. So different types of fabric and I'd have to cut it into about a thousand squares. And then with a heart's delight, there'd only be four prints and there'd be 60 squares. And so the next thing is to determine, well, is this technical information or is this scientific information? What is technical information? Technical, remember, deals with procedures or specifications or methods, whereas the scientific information deals with like experiments. And so I would say both of these are what I would call technical information. So now let me gather some scientific information and that's going to be from my other source. Okay, for the next one, this is an experiment that was done by the Color Research, Applied Research Group, uh, or uh, uh, submitted to a journal, rather, by this group from an Institute of Psychology, it looks like, in Switzerland. 
Um, so anyway, so what were they doing? They were showing people different scenarios, like you bought a lottery ticket and you just won, and then they had to choose what color kind of was associated with that. And then it looks like they gathered a lot of data and found these colors like red, orange, and especially yellow are associated with joy, whereas some of these darker colors are associated with sadness. And so what is this? And so it's based on an experiment and observations, this would be scientific information. So this would come from technical and this comes from scientific information. So now what is my job? Well, I have to evaluate that. So let's say, for example, that I want to make a easy, joyous heart quilt, then I'm going to choose specific technical information. So this information would be important because I might make it out of yellow and then use lighter colors so that scientific information might be helpful. And then when I'm trying to decide which of these different designs I should do, if I want it to be easy, then I might choose one that doesn't have as many squares. So I might choose the heart's delight and I might just leave this until I become better at doing some quilting. And so again, what are we doing? We're just taking information from those sources. One of the big things is to identify is this scientific information or is this technical information, then evaluating that. And as you do that, communicating information. So I might say, I'm gonna make a Heart's Delight quilt and I'm gonna use the colors of maybe white, yellow, and I don't know, orange <laughs> to make my quilt. And so that's how you obtain, evaluate, and communicate information. What I'm gonna do is clean this up and you'll have a chance to do it on your own. Okay, for the second one, we've obviously can see the phenomena is gonna be related to So it's about chess, but we're going to narrow that down a little bit and I'm going to make it about the opening move in chess. So I don't play a lot of chess and I don't know much about chess. That's the idea with this. We're going to gather information from this. And so what we're going to try to come up with was what would be a good opening move if you were playing chess. And so what I would encourage you to do, I'll link up some pages from these down below, is pause the video, identify important information, identify if it's technical or scientific information, and then communicate at the end if you are white in a game of chess or black in a game of chess and black goes second, what would be your moves? And then unpause the video, come back, and we'll see how our thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is you're going to make sure that you go through and then write down all the sources. And so let me do that. Okay, so we've got three sources. We have Chess Basics, which is by Nigel Short. We've got Puzzle Right Guide to Chess, which is by Bert Hochberg. And then we have a data-driven exploration of the evolution of chess. And I could look through and see who are each of these. I remember looking through and seeing this is an expert in chess. This is an expert in chess. And then the other one, the third one is not. It's written by a... Uh, data scientist, Dr. Randall Olson. So that's gonna tell me a little bit about what type of information that we're looking at. But now what I'm gonna do is go through and write down what I think some important information that I could obtain from each of these that would help me figure out what's my opening move going to be. Okay, so I can see on here that the first thing is that there's some notation. So one determines the move, Q determines the piece, so like queen would be Q, and then F3 determines the square. So this looks like almost a game of battleship where you figure out what are the letters and then what is the numbers. And I don't even know if this is a, a legal move, but let's start there. Okay, so what I was doing is I was looking ahead to figure out what are they suggesting would be a good move, and they're saying 1E4, which I get the square but not the move, and then I had to go back and notice that, okay, pawns don't actually get a letter. And so that would be additional information that I'm obtaining, that a pawn is not given a letter, 
And so also, let me see, what are some suggestions for a first move? Okay, so from Chess Basics, I've learned a little bit about the notation. I also know about the pawns, and they said a popular opening, if you're white, would be 1e4. And so remember, I want to note where I receive that information from. So that is from my source 1, source 1, and this would be from source 1. And now let me look through my second source. Okay, from this puzzle right guide to chess, they're suggesting that a good opening is 1e4. So I've seen that at least in two ideas, both sources. And, but they're saying when you have black, you should either play 1e5 or 1c5. So that would be what you'd play for an opening move if you weren't white but you were black. And so now let me move to my third source. And so my third source looks like they were looking at data. So in this study, 1e4, 1d6. So I can now see that what they were doing is looking through thousands of games over time, and they're trying to figure out what would be a good place to start. And so from third source, it looks like over time, the most common start, if you're white, is to be 1 e4. It looks like d4 over time and by 2015 has gotten more popular. So I could almost say, man, 1e4 seems like the most popular one, and that comes from my three sources. Uh, but now I want to look at what is my, is it going to be 1e5 or 1c5? So this looks like over time these have been what black should move as far as the first move. And so let me look through that. Looks like if white plays e4, then c5, or the Sicilian defense, is a good defense. So let me write that down. Okay, so over time I can see that the Sicilian defense has been more popular. So if they play e4 for white move, c5 would be your best defense. And so next thing I want to do is figure out, okay, is this information technical information or scientific information? So if we go through, the first one came from just that Chess Basics book, and so there was no, like, observations or experiment done. This is just based on like what they believe or what the experts believe. So I would call that technical. Upon not giving a letter, it's not like a science experiment determined that. That'd be technical information. And then a lot of these openings are technical information as well. So I would say a lot of this is just technical information. But since this last one came from a study, so they were studying thousands of players over time, that's really about observations. And so what is that? They're observing it over time, and so that's more scientific information. And so if I were to take all of this information and now integrate it, I have to make my best bet as to what I would do. And so let me write what I would say my good opening moves in chess would be. Okay, so to communicate my information, based on the study and the technical information, if I were white and we were playing chess, I would play 1e4. So I'd move my pawn to e4, and then if I were black and they did that, I would move it to c5 using the Sicilian defense. And again, I don't know anything about chess, but digging through observations and technical information, I can get a better sense of how I want to communicate that information. And so that's how we use those two different types of information. Remember, we did that with quilts, and now we've done it with chess. I'll put some more scientific and technical information below. You could try to figure out a, a design for Lego, or you could even figure out uh, where we come from. So stellar nucleosynthesis. But that is obtaining, evaluating, and communicating information level four, and I hope that's helpful.